Thanks very much indeed. Okay. Well, I welcome members to the 20th meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. As always, ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is the decision on taking business in private. It's proposed that we take item four in private. This is to allow the committee to consider a draft report on the Education Scotland Bill as amended at stage two. Do we agree to take that in private, please? Thank you. Gender item two, instruments subject to negative procedure and no points have been raised by our advisors on a very large number which goes like this. The community care provision of residential accommodation out with Scotland, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 202, the University of the West of Scotland Amendment of the University of Paisley, Scotland Order of Council 1993, Order of Council 2015, SSI 2015-209, the Financial Assistance for Environmental Purposes, Scotland Order 2015, SSI 2015-210, the Water Environment, River Basin Management Planning, etc. Miscellaneous Amendments, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-211, the Environmental Liability Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-214. The Debt Arrangement Scheme Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-216. The Property Factors Registration Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-217. The Building Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-218. The National Health Service, Optical Charges and Payments and General Ophthalmic Services Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 219 Public Bodies Joint Working Integration Joint Board Establishment Scotland Amendment Order 2015 SSI 2015 222 the Protection of Vulnerable Groups Scotland Act 2007, Fees for Scheme Membership and Disclosure Requests Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-223, the Scottish Courts and Tribunal Service Administrative Support, Specified Pensions Order 2015, SSI 2015-224. Scottish Sensitive Council, Procedure for Appointment of Members, Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-225. The Late Payment of Commercial Debt, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-226. And the Health and Care Professions Council, Registration and Fees, Amendment Number 2, Rules, Order of Council 2015, SSI 2015-1337. Is the committee content with all of these, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Agenda item three, then, is the Community Empowerment Scotland Bill and this item of business consideration of the delegated powers in this bill after stage two. Members will have noted the Scottish Government has provided a supplementary delegated powers memorandum and will have seen the briefing paper for the committee. Now, stage three consideration of the bill is due to take place on Wednesday the 17th of June, that is next week. The committee should therefore agree its conclusions today. A number of the comments that the committee had at stage one were addressed through amendments at stage two. There are, however, four delegate powers provisions within which the committee may wish to raise points on. Firstly, new section 97D of the Land Reform Scotland Act 2003, as inserted by section 48 of the bill, sets out the types of legal entity that may be a part 3A community body and therefore eligible to make an application to buy abandoned or neglected land under new Part 3A of the 2003 Act. This section has been amended at Stage 2, and a power conferred upon Scottish Ministers to specify additional types of entity which may be a Part 3 community body in regulations. The Committee may wish to note that Parts 2 and 3 of the 2003 Act contain similar powers to the power inserted in the new section 79D1B. I said 79, I meant 97, sorry, D1B. Those powers are subject to the affirmative procedure. This power is, however, subject to the negative procedure for consistency. The committee may wish to raise this with the Scottish Government. Does the committee agree to call on the Scottish Government to amend the bill so that the power in new section 97 D1B of the 2003 Act is subject to the affirmative procedure? Agreed. Thank you. Secondly, new section 62C2 of the bill, <coughs> as inserted at stage two, provides that the Scottish ministers may, by regulations, modify the meaning of Scottish Professional Football League Club in subsection one. This power is subject to the negative procedure. The committee may consider this power to modify the meaning of Scottish Professional Football League Club as a significant power, which is relevant to the scope and application of the new Part 5B of the Bill, and which may appear to merit the higher level of parliamentary scrutiny afforded by the affirmative procedure. Uh, does the committee therefore agree to call on the Scottish Government to amend the power at Section 62C2 of the Bill at Stage 3, so that it is subject to the affirmative procedure? 
John. I thought the term Scottish Professional Football League Club was um, self-explanatory and did not need a definition, but I accept that if we do need a definition, then it should be the affirmative procedure. Do members have any other comments? No. Okay, and we are agreed to report like that. Thank you. Thirdly, sections 62E, 62F, 62I, 62G, and 62P, pardon me, use the words prescribe or prescribed, and it appears that the intention in respect of these provisions of the new part 5P of the bill is to confer a number of delegated powers. However, the committee may wish to note that the use of the words prescribe or prescribed alone is insufficient to compare a delegated power, and that where such terms are used in legislation, they're normally accompanied by an interpretive provision which specifies who the powers are conferred on and what form the subordinate legislation made in their exercise is intended to take. Does the committee agree to call on the Scottish Government to amend the Bill at Stage 3 in order that Sections 62E, F, I, K and P are fully cast as powers to make subordinate legislation subject to the negative procedure and to clarify by defining the term prescribe and prescribed or by such other means as they consider appropriate whom the powers are conferred on and what form the, legis the subordinate legislation made in their exercise is intended to be? Stuart. Um, convener, it, 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 it is uh, unfortunate that they use the phrase at 62E1, uh, such other body as Scottish ministers be prescribed in view of the ambiguity you've highlighted. And it seems, it seems passing strange that uh, we only have to go back to the beginning of um, this, this part of the amended bill, uh, 62C, the meaning of Scottish Professional Football Club, where at uh, uh, subparagraph 2, the more normal phrasing, Scottish ministers may by regulations uh, modify the meaning of football club in subsection 1. It, it does seem strange to use one uh, more regular way of doing things and then to uh, start to use a word which isn't defined. Uh, what, what I would suggest um, is that while I'm uh, content with uh, what it is proposed that we say that if ministers um, do not uh, uh, bring forward amendments at stage three uh, that we as a committee delegate to the convener and deputy convener the power to bring forward in the name of the committee amendments that will substitute in an appropriate way um, may prescribe with um, words that would give effect to something like Scottish ministers made by regulations, which would be the more normal form. Um, I do expect that the, the government will respond to previous comments on this subject, but I think it might be useful, as we won't be able to meet before the deadline for the submission of amendments, uh, that we empower convener and deputy convener to put forward amendments if that is necessary, because it does seem to be a rather cack-handed way to describe uh, what it seems in policy terms uh, to be probably quite a reasonable thing to want to do. Thank you for that comment. Can I just observe, before I bring you in, John, that this does seem to raise the whole issue of how we should operate when we're very close to stage three and we're dealing with stage two amendments in the way that we are, and which I suspect the government would not have chosen, of course. Um, because if we wait until next Tuesday's meeting, as Stuart Stevenson rightly points out, we will only be able to produce a manuscript amendment which is unsatisfactory, let's put it that way, and puts the onus on presiding officers and government to agree with us. Whereas if we did have some mechanism of looking at the amendments, which I gather will come tomorrow, um, that's the expectation, then we would be able to submit something in the name of the committee, as it were, in the typed form, uh, formally, rather than having to do it too late. I don't know whether members have any views on how we should tackle that. I guess in the first instance, let me just ask our, our clerk whether we can reasonably and acceptably delegate to the Deputy Convener and myself the power to do that. Possible, yeah. yeah, okay. The, the, the view is that that's perfectly possible and a legitimate thing to do. John. Um, thank you, uh, Convener. I'm more than happy um, to support that you and the Deputy Convener, if required, provide a manuscript amendment to clear up this um, slightly anomalous situation in which we find ourselves. And I would further uh, say that um, 
again we are back where we have been before um, too little time between stage 2 and stage 3 to consider um, the effects of stage 2 and amendments that might be required therefore notwithstanding um, the assurances we've had from government ministers and others that this situation would be avoided at all costs in future um, these assurances given to us in the past can observe we've had a while since stage two but obviously a lot of this has, ha has taken a while to think about i've got to say that in principle of course th the idea that these amendments come rather late is something that we have already discussed and i think i have discussed on the record with standards and procedures which is another issue for another day but it hasn't really been looked at Stuart, uh, just to be clear what i'm proposing does not relate to manuscript amendment but to a formal amendment that would form part of the business bulletin um, manuscript amendments of course could be another issue, but uh, I'm, I'm proposing that it would not simply be the committee empowering convener to yeah. do manuscript, but to do proper ones. Can I, can I just, again, on, for, the, for the sake of the record, <coughs> pardon me, anybody listening will maybe be wondering what on earth we're doing. If we see the amendments tomorrow, when's the date for putting in amendments formally? Please. Thursday. Right. So we could, the deputy convener and I could agree clearly with our clerks and advisers, an amendment, we could put it in by Thursday, in which case it would have been formally lodged. It would not be in a manuscript amendment. Anything we do after that, of course, would then have to be in a manuscript amendment. That's, that's absolutely fine by me. I wasn't aware that there were, it, my position was essentially a fallback position in case yeah. there was insufficient time. But equally, if we then found things next week, we would still be in a position to bring forward a manuscript amendment, albeit that that would then be at the discretion of the presiding officer, as I understand it. Yep. Okay, so we're agreed that we need, the committee has empowered us to do that. Thank you. Can I come back to the basic question, which I don't want to read again, um, which is to ask the committee to call on the Scottish Government to amend the bill at stage three to deal with that point that I just put on the record. Yes. Are we agreed? We are. Thank you. Right. Fourthly, new section 69A of the bill requires the Scottish ministers to make regulations for or in connection with the size or sizes of an allotment but without affecting section 68.1d. Section 68.1d defines allotment for the purposes of part 7 of the bill as, amongst other things, land that meets one of the requirements as to size set out in sections 68.2 and 3. The committee may consider that it's not clear what provision the regulations made under 69a are intended to make or how any such regulations could make provision about the size of allotments without affecting the requirements as to size of allotment that are specifically set on the face of the, face of the bill. Does the committee therefore agree to call on the Scottish Government to amend the bill at stage 3 so as to clarify the manner in which the power in section 69a regarding allotment size is intended to operate? John. Can I just say I think this is very important and I completely agree that we should seek clarification on this because I know it's a controversial area. I've had constituents in touch with me about it, so I think we really want clarity on it. Right. Uh, is the committee agreed on that? Agreed. Thank you. Does the committee agree to report that it is content with the other provisions in the bill which have been amended at stage two to insert or substantially alter provisions conferring powers to make subordinate legislation and other delegated powers? Yes. Thank you. That completes item three and... I can now move this meeting into private. Thank you.